Hi, welcome to VehicleMaintenanceAndRepairs.com once again. Um, we have this Volkswagen Golf. It's a city golf. It's a very popular car here in uh, Cape Town, South Africa. Uh, basically, this car um, has a, uh, the buzzer for, the, for um, indicating low oil pressure going on occasionally. Okay, so the first step that I'm going to, the first thing that I did was to replace the sensor. Tested it, was not the sensor. Okay, so with us not being able to see through metal, um, I have to take uh, drain the oil, take the stump out, and uh, inspect the oil pump. Okay, I suspect that the oil pump sieve could be blocked, but failing that, it could be the pump itself. Okay, so um, uh, the procedure that I'm going to follow with this car is draining the oil, taking off the sump, taking off the oil pump. Okay, I'm going to do my inspection once that is all been stripped. Um, if I'm not uh, convinced that it's just the sift that's blocked, um, I actually suspect the pump in, in, in this case because this vehicle hasn't been serviced in a while and the pump has been there forever. Okay, so um, I will replace the pump um, if I find the need to. I will put on a brand new oil filter and put in clean oil, new sump gasket. We put everything together and we go and drive and test drive the car and see how that turns out. Okay, so in that order, let's get on with it. Hi, this is the vehicle in question. So um, I'll go ahead and jack it up, drain the oil, take off the sump, remove the oil for oil pump, oil filter, and we'll inspect the oil pump and see if it's necessary to replace. Okay, so I've got the vehicle jacked up. Okay, just make sure that we've got uh, nice and stable. I normally open up the bonnet, it allows more light through, makes it easier. The tools we're basically going to be needing here, we need an oil receptacle, something to catch the oil, size 19 spanner for your um, sump to open up. That's the first stage. So I'll show you how we're going to do that now quickly. So we're down here, and you can see the sump there. Okay, uh, size 19. Uh, socket spanner that we're going to be using all right and then the next step would be to loosen up um, these uh, six small bolts here with a 10 head you know uh, there's about 20 22 of them yes so all you need basically what I'm using here I'm using a half inch drive long extension size 10 socket and a ratchet okay all half inch drive I'll be taking that as simple as that okay just loosen up all the bolts okay like that and um, I'll go ahead and loosen them all up and get back to you when it's all when it's all taken when you've loosened the, all the bolts you can basically just loosen uh, you know the, take the bolts out by hand you know they'll, they'll basically turn turn pretty easy like that okay that's what the bolts look like. You will have 20 of those. Okay, so just simply turn it out by hand. Okay, I'll go ahead and do that and get back to you when I've got them all out. Right, so what I normally do is I just use the old uh, screwdriver and a hammer. And I'll just sort of stick it in between because all the bolts are out now. I'll stick it in between the engine and the sump. Give it a few taps, and that's basically how we, we break the seal, and then we get the sump to drop down to the ground. It's as simple as that. Okay, so quite simply, we'll remove the oil pump as well, so that we can just give it a good inspection. Take a look and see if everything is board we need to take a look at that sif to see if there's any blockage there um, so simply the, 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 the pump just comes off with uh, two bolts it's basically eight more bolts uh, about a 13 13 mil heads as you can see there it's the pump off okay and then the pump just slides out stick it into the, into the sump there down to the you can see that the sif inside there um, there's definitely no blockage, you know. The sift seems clear. So now my suspicions are to the pump itself. As you can see, um, the sift inside is absolutely... 
Well, that's the oil pump, eh? You can see the surf is pretty clear, no blockage. But now the pump, you know, we could be having a problem with it. So yes, yeah, so once we've uh, taken everything off, we've taken off the pump, uh, we've taken off the sump, you know, we just have to clean up all the, uh, the contact surfaces over here, make sure that the old gaskets are taken off, okay, and that it's just nice and clean. Um, I've uh, used a, basically a scraper, a gasket scraper, just to take off all the old gasket and the old sealer. Okay, we just need a nice clean surface and uh, we need a nice clean surface on the sump side as well. So the sump is easier to clean because you have it on the bench and you know you can put it on a grinder with a brush just to clean up all the, all the bad spots. So yeah, um, this is all uh, ready for the new uh, um, oil pump to go on and the new sump to go on. So we're just going to get the parts and then we're going to assemble this whole thing. We've also taken off the oil filter we're going to be putting on a brand new oil filter as well um, when we put in and, and of course clean oil all right so I'll get back to you once we've got the new parts ready for installation okay so we've got our parts here let's just go ahead and open up this uh, package with a sump gasket make sure that the sump gasket is the correct one which we need for this vehicle um, just the packaging. You see, all the surfaces are nicely cleaned up. Okay, taken all the old gasket off and cleaned it up nicely. Overlay the sump gasket on the on the sump itself. Make sure that all the holes line up nicely. Okay, so um, look at the. The new oil pump. Nice and nice and new. So the first thing we sort of want to do is you you want to lube, you want to prime your oil pump. Uh, what I normally do is I just do this. I throw quite a, you know, I just pump a lot of oil in there. Okay, um, just fill up the the pump itself. Fill the pump up, and then we'll turn the. As you can see, as you turn the the, the pump's impeller, you know, it just sort of sucks the oil through, and it pushes it out at the bottom over there. Okay. Other way around, obviously, it's going to work this way around where it will be sucking the oil up. Okay, through the filter, um, through the surf at least. So we'll put that one side, okay. Uh, we'll just give that a wipe, wipe up all that oil which we've missed there. And then uh, we'll be putting this sump gasket on. What I do is I use a good I use a good gasket maker. Okay, in this case, I use a Victor Victor Rhines. All right, it's in YouTube, so we open it up, puncture the tube, and we get the. We just put a nice bead of a sealer on the one side of the sump surface. Doesn't have to be thick because we are using a gasket as well. So the sealer is just a precaution, you know, to give it a better a better seal. So we'll put the gasket on, top of that, line the holes up as best we can, and then we put on another another uh, sort of um, layer on this side of the gasket as well. Okay, and then once we've got all that on, we're ready to put the sump on. Okay, so what I do is, we've got to go fit the pump quickly, and put the pump on first. I'll show you how we do that. Okay, so I'm ready to fit the oil pump. It's all nicely primed. There's no gasket used between the the, the surface. It's basically a, what, what we call a flush fit. So there's no gasket here. Okay, so we put your 
you put your input shaft through, okay, it's got a, a little lift on it and it will it will basically go into the distributor which is geared to the one of the one of the shafts and that in turn will turn the oil pump uh, gear um, to activate the impeller to pump oil through the engine okay you got these long um, eight more bolts that basically hold the oil pump onto the engine on the inside so we'll go ahead and tighten that up nicely make sure it's nicely tight there is a precaution uh, when you put the pump in make sure that when you put the pump in that it goes flush up against the block okay so in other words if it's flush up against the block then that means that the little um, groove is is, 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 is in the in the drive shaft you know, that actually drives the pump okay so um, that is very really important right so here we have our sump which we will be putting on okay just use a few bolts to sort of line it up like that Once you have them lined up nicely, make 100% sure that you put them in by hand first so that you do not cross thread. Okay, because if you cross thread these bolts, you're going to be in trouble. So I've got that nicely secured. Okay, so I'll go ahead and I'll fit the rest of the bolts and then tighten them up. It's quite simple. You know how you took them off, you use the size 10 socket and uh, extension with a ratchet. Um, that's the same way you put it back but when you tighten these bolts be very careful uh, they are only six millimeter th threads okay with 10 mil heads but uh, don't over tighten them because they can snap and they can strip the thread because um, you know it's, it's a thin small bolt so uh, you know you got to use caution when you tighten these bolts up okay I'll get back to you when I got everything um, tightened and we're ready to put the oil in Right, so all the bolts are on, they're nice and tight, okay, all of them, so we can go and uh, fill the oil, um, but before that I'll just put the filter on, right, nice new oil filter, which we'll put on, just um, don't forget to put a film of oil, okay, so that the gasket doesn't stick when you're busy turning the filter on, we'll just... Turn it on by hand as normal. Spin on filters. Oh, pretty simple. Okay, turn it on by hand. And then just tighten them by hand there. Just by hand. Tighten it by hand. No spanners needed. Okay, nice new filter. Nice new oil pump. Gasket. And a nice clean sump. So now we'll fill the oil, start it up, and see if our problem has been solved. So okay, what I normally do when I top up oil, I use a funnel and a beaker, and I'm going to be putting in three liters um, to begin with. Then I'll check it on the dipstick. You don't want to put in too much oil. This car spec is about 3.8 liters, um, including the filter. You know, including when the filter stopped up. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just put in three liters here, and I'm going to check the dipstick. Um, if they're easy enough to start us up, that's, then I'll just top it up uh, once the engines run and fill the filter as well. What you don't want to do is start the car with too little oil. In. Okay, and then you also don't want to overfill it. You can see it's right on the mark. So after we start it, uh, you know, it should actually have dropped a bit and. We might have to just top it up again. But um, that will be enough to start the vehicle safely. Okay, first time start up. You can see the oil light is flashing over there. Okay, we got the ignition on, so we're going to start the car. The oil light should go out immediately. Okay, and that uh, signifies uh, that we do have oil pressure. Now, the oil pressure light, the oil pressure buzzer went on at about 3000 revs. Um, but the for maybe a minute or half a minute and we'll 
see the oil buzzer on the dashboard comes on. Okay, it came on at about 3,000 revs at the sustained sustain period of revving at 3,000 revs. So we'll just give it some time and see what happens. It seems to be okay, it would have come on by now. But the best is to drive it. Because we did about uh, 10 to 15 kilometers and then the buzzer came on. Seems to be okay. So we'll go drive it and see what happens. Well, let's check the oil. You know, I've got a new assistant, Giuseppe, there. He's doing the wiping and the cleaning. <laughs> <laughs> Gives me a little bit of a, a little bit of a break. And then we'll just check. Okay, we need to top her up at least another pint. Okay. Now, that's unusual because the Golfs are normally take, but uh, uh, actually this is a, a 1800 engine. It's not a 1300, so it would make sense. So let's just put in another pint. It's probably just enough to fill the 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 because it was full, and the filter has obviously filled now. So it's uh, dropped the level a little bit. Okay, so we're just going to top that up. It's about a pint, enough to fill the oil filter. I won't put in more than that because that would mean that we'd be overfilling the we'd be overfilling it. Okay, just make sure you put your cap on. Make sure it locks. Okay definitive lock and um, let's check the level again and that seems to be uh, right on the button okay 100 percent so now we can jack this car down and we can take it for the drive well so far it's been behaving itself um, the buzzer hasn't gone on um, i've done about uh, well we'll call it about five kilometers so far um, so I'm going to take it onto the freeway now and uh, we'll basically see what will happen there we'll see the revs um, it seems to be okay uh, just stay within the speed limit but we'll try and get our revs up at 3000 maybe keep it there and then see Basically on the freeway now. Well, there we are. Job well done. Buzzer's not going on. So yes, we've done uh, all the necessary. Um, I've replaced the oil pump. I've changed the oil. I've put in a, um, um, a brand new oil filter. Uh, we've put in a sensor and uh, I've test driven the car and the problem is solved. Um, that was definitely the oil pump that was faulty. Not enough oil pressure. Okay, so job well done. Until next time, cheerio.